Google released the Agent Development Kit just a few days ago, and there's not a lot of people talking about it. And truthfully, it's one of those things that I, I like to keep an eye on because I usually think of these libraries that come out as being immature. And, and yes, this is a new library, but it feels really well done. Some of the demos that I'll show you will hopefully be pretty exciting to you as they are to me because it gives me ideas on things that I actually want to build into my production application. In particular, they do a really good job allowing you to set up evals. So you can judge the, the quality of the output of the models. They do a really good job with agent-to-agent -agent communication. They also make it really easy to set up parallel agent workflows, which is something that I've always found a little bit harder in some of the other frameworks. Now, the core pillars of the ADK, they say if multi-agent by design makes sense. I mean, that should be one of the core pillars. I do like this a lot, uh, the rich model ecosystem, because you can use Gemini or OpenAI or, you know, they got the Vertex AI model garden. Those things are very important. Uh, I do not want to be limited to just Google's ecosystem. So the fact that they're pretty open about that is a huge plus. It honestly would be a, it'd be dead in the water if it was just Google only. Now, I have not tested it with uh, the model context protocol or MCPs. But I have tested it with search and code exec, uh, which is really super cool. Uh, they do allow also really great custom function calling and things, which I, I've also tested. Now, built-in streaming. This is one that I'm trying to think about what would be useful here. I'm not totally sure. I haven't done much with audio and video capabilities yet. They make it very clear. And this is really one of the things that I think other agentic frameworks actually are trying to do, but I think Google does it better or easier uh, because in code, it's very simple to set up a sequential, a parallel or a loop agentic orchestration. So if I want to do a very standard workflow that just does step one, two, three, four, five, six, sequential. If I want to kick off a parallel job where I'm researching a million things at the same time and they come back and finish, parallel. Or we can do something like what I originally tried to do with my AI book writer, where we loop over and over and over and over again until we reach some end goal. And then what they say is they've got an integrated developer experience. And this is the part I really like. How easy it is for me to set this up and get it running is just unbelievable to me. Now, you may know most of my experience prior is with Autogen. So you may be using a framework that you find just as easy and have just as much debugging capabilities. I may just not know that one. I've played around with Langchain, but I find that one seems to be very brittle. A lot of updates seem to break things. It just seems a little bit more convoluted than what I'd really like. And if you're a fan of that, that or if you're a fan of Langchain, that's totally fine. I just haven't used that one as much as Autogen. So let me jump into the documentation a little bit here. It's very easy to set up. You can set up uh, just installing pip install Google ADK. So I'm in the IDE now. We're going to be focusing on this My Test folder here. And these are some of the tests that I put together that we're going to run through. Some of these come directly from their documentation that I just got up and running. There's a few things that are a little bit nuanced. So to set these things up, you basically want to have a parent folder with an environment file. Now, the environment file should include like your Google key um, and whether you're using Vertex AI. And you, there's other settings you can put in there. Uh, so this would be an example that you would fill in and just turn it into your actual environment file. The simplest is just going to be your Google API key and whether you're using Vertex. So you can set this to false and uh, set your API key here. It's all you absolutely need until you start dealing with things like RAG. Okay, so let's first talk about the sequential piece because this would be the workflow oriented one. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna create a sequential agent and define the sub agents that you actually want to go through. Now, this particular one goes through a very simple structure of, hey, you are gonna write Python code and you're gonna output only the raw code. Then the next agent we have here is a code reviewer, which basically reviews the code, makes suggestion edits, and then looks at style, improvements, constructive feedback, stuff like that. Then we go and we do a refactor agent. Now, this has got me really thinking about the potential of using 
something like this in an MCP call to accomplish like a sequential step of things. I haven't really nailed down in my head what I want that to be yet. But anyway, let me show you what this looks like in practice here. Okay, so I ran a game of life. That's all I put in the chat because you saw the prompts. It knows to write a particular code. It wrote the first version of the code. The reviewer ended up refactor or whatever it was called came in and kind of gave it feedback on it and gave it some suggestions. And then ultimately we got the final version of the code. Now, if you look over here on the left, what you'll see here is some really interesting things. And this is the part I really like a lot. So you can always see the current state, which is, I know this looks messy, but this alone is super nice just to have this. If there are artifacts, you can look at artifacts, but the events, I can go through and see the particular event. So I've got my code pipeline agent. And the one thing I don't like is the styling of this. I don't or can't figure out how to actually move this around. I would love to be able to see more what's being said over here. But you can scroll through, you can see the content parts. Going to event three, you can see we're in the code refactor. And ultimately the refactor code comes through like that. So you can see all the ones that I put in that folder I have linked in here. So here's a customer service one. So I could say something like, what can you help me with? And it already has some context in there. It thinks I'm Alex, but it's the civil home and garden. Now imagine all this being hooked up to database. I can ask it questions. I can have it look at the cart. Let me just show you some of the tool calls that this one could potentially do. Um, again, it's hard to read them because of the way this is formatted, which might just be something I didn't set up correctly. So I don't want to discount that in any way. But I do find it odd that I can't scroll here, or I'm just dumb and I don't know which button to actually push to scroll. Anyway, this is pretty neat because I can say, all right, I want to plant tomatoes. And then what I can actually have it start doing is adding stuff to the cart for me, checking the particular um, items already in my cart. So I asked it now, can you check what I have in my cart? Do I have the right soil? So here it did, it did the tool call to access cart information and it ended up uh, working there. So if I go to events four, five and six, so here's event six here, six would be this one, five would be this one, and six would be this one to so access card information. Um, and then you can see the arrow. So I went and called it event five, it comes back and tells me it's successful. It's a really freaking cool system. So, and if you want, you can run their current session and add it as an eval and then basically run that evaluation later to see if it succeeds. I haven't totally got that nailed down perfectly yet. Most of the things I've added failed because I need to look at like what they're actually testing, how I can kind of control what the eval is looking for, that type of thing. So I'll leave that as it is, but it's a really interesting feature that I just need to dig into a little bit more. Now on this one, this is going to basically allow me to do a Google search. So I can say something like, hey, what is the weather in Miami, Florida? This will actually reach out to Google and return the weather. So if I click here, what you can see is the grounding information that ends up coming from it, where it's getting it from. It's getting it from basically the Google search here, NBC Miami, AccuWeather, and then it gives you a grounding score of 72.59. The fact that you can see all of this is just really, really cool. Then if we go into the research parallel, so this would be the case where you're using a parallel agent. Your parallel agent is set up with literally just a parallel agent. And in the, this particular case, this is an example that they had. Um, you basically can have it research three things and return one or two sentences for each of the research things. So the first one researches renewable energy sources. This one researches electric vehicle technology. And this one researches carbon capture methods. So if I go ahead and run that, uh, you'll see kind of how this works. So here's the results back. And they all three kind of came back the same time. And you can see the grounding data that came in, uh, the web search queries that happened. Honestly, this become so, so powerful because you can then start looking at the grounding confidence scores to decide, even in your workflow, if what you're using is 
accurate enough? Is it grounded enough? Which basically means web searched and verified. I'm I'm so excited about this. I really want to take some time and build more stuff in it than I have already. And the final one is a writer loop. So I can say something like start writing. And what you'll see it do is it'll write something. It'll go back, review it, and be like, okay, add more details. Okay, make it more exciting. Now, this one does have a limit for the number of loops it does. You can increase that limit. So it stops here. But you get kind of the idea of the way this is working. And as you kind of cycle through, you can see all of the data around it. A few more things before we close out here. The way to start the server is you very simply do ADK web. That will then launch it typically on port 8000. So you can see here that it started up on port 8000. If you go to port 8000, you can see basically all the agents that you have available. This particular one I'm running in the RAG directory. Now, this is one I haven't fully got working yet. I'm working on trying to get it configured, but I think there's some additional things that I just, I have either missed it in the documentation or I just have messed up on my end. So I am excited about trying to get the, the RAG one working. I do just end up getting like some weird errors. Um, I definitely do not have something configured right. But the other ones I was able to get up and running really quickly. And all of the documentation is really easy to follow. If you go through the quick start, you can go through the tutorial. If you can look at the testing, you go to the sample agents. They have a GitHub repository of them all. Um, I would love to know what your guys' opinion is of the ADK compared to frameworks that you've used. As of right now, I think this might be my favorite. I think it's better than Autogen, although I've used Autogen more, so it's early to tell. But I also think the web browser experience that it has, while a little weird in areas and got some quirks, I do think that is, for lack of a better word, just a, a pretty dang sweet to be able to have uh, for debugging. And I really, really love the idea of do, getting a Val set up because one of the issues that I run into a lot in production it's making tiny changes to my prompt or making tiny changes to model versions or maybe OpenAI decides to open or update one of their model. I need to be able to check the quality of my, my agents easy. And right now it is kind of a pain in the butt to be honest with you. So anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think of it if you get a chance to check it out. Otherwise, I hopefully this has just been informative about what's happening in Google, the ADK release that they did. And if you happen to make it this far and wouldn't mind giving me a like and subscribe, that would mean everything to me. Until next time, everyone, peace out.